who who is known as the father of biology the father of biology um uh, I, I don't know what i i haven't heard of father of biology okay so it's a father of biology known as the aristotle he was the first person right and he contributed a lot of thing in the biology that's why he is known as the father of biology okay anyways so biology which Who's means that? yeah Who? aristotle it's like that wait where is my quote yeah it's like that it's can you see what i'm writing yes yeah it's aristotle he is the father of biology the ancient <laughs> father of biology right okay and he is also regarded as the father of zoology that this is the my degree zoology oh this is the man's degree zoology yeah. yeah this is the my degree right oh that's your degree yeah that's my degree zoology is my degree zoology okay. Yeah. What's zoology? Um, zoology, which means a person who is competent to teach and who has a competent knowledge about the study of animals, completely, right? Okay. From simplest to the complex. Got it. Biology. Yes, when we go to the higher grade, so biology is bifurcated into two different things. into two different things first is going to be the botany and other is going to be the zoology botany it includes the study of plants it's a what study of plants so i want to ask you some yeah is this um the organization for biology is it higher because i'll be doing higher in the mock yeah exactly the... it's 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 a higher when i show you the graph i mean the ppt definitely you will see the higher things over there and it's a zoology which means study of the animals and this is the my highest degree yeah right and along with that i have many more degrees and all that i have like the degrees uh, i can fill a box that my degree i have anyways yeah so topic is organization so as you can see over here so in the human beings if you see the all the human beings not especially the human beings all the living organism they are made up of cells isn't it right yes cells mm -hmm. and who is the father of cells i mean who discovered the cells uh who discovered cells yeah it's robert Cook. He was a person who discovered well, cells. 16... Yeah, let's see. In 1665, the robot took was the first person who discovered the cells. Got it? You can say almost 400 and 500 years ago, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So that was mm -hmm. it. And you know, cells is a Latin word. It's a Latin word, and in English, Latin. Trans yeah, it's Latin. And in English translation, its meaning in English is called the small rooms, small rooms. Got it? Because the earlier science was only written in a Latin languages, but now the science has been converted into the English language because English is the international language, and wherever you go, you can find the English speakers. Got it? Yeah. Okay, why it was the name given cell? Is there any reason behind it? So yes, there is a reason behind it. So what he did basically, I'm talking about this study story of the robot Coke, like how he uh, found these cells. Okay, so what he did, he took a cork. You know the cork, the bottleneck, right? Uh, what the wooden cork. Part. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Right. So yeah. what he did, he took a very small piece of wooden cork, right, and he observed under the primitive microscope, primitive compound microscope. Because nowadays we have a variety of microscope. We have a light microscope. We have the electron microscopes. We have this. We have that. We have lots of types of microscope depending upon their 
uses, isn't it? So in yeah. the 1665, almost four to 500 years ago, there was a very primitive type of microscope. And when he observed the piece of cord under the microscope, what he, what he has seen, he has seen that like small, small compartment like this. It is, it's like the beehive, right? Yeah. In the beehive, yeah. you can see the very small, small compartment for the bees, isn't it? Right? Yes. So when he observed this thing, so because of this small, and that time the science was written only in Latin languages. So that's why this small room termed as the cells. You got it? And now we are studying the cells, which is the fundamental units of all the living organisms. Right? Yes. Yeah. So in this chapter, we're going to learn how the living person is being on and how the things is being developed. Right? So mm -hmm. you can see the overview. The first principle of this thing you can see, we're going to learn the animal tissue, organ, and that organ system. Right? And in that, what are heart the other? Well. Yes? The heart as well, right? Yeah. 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 So you can see these things we're going to cover up, right? And after that, we have a plant sections. And in the plant, we're going to cover up the plant tissue and as well as the plant organ system. Okay? Right? Okay. So mm -hmm. let's do over here. Okay. You can see the living organisms. We know the, the fundamental units of all the living organism is cells, right? Got it? Mm -hmm. And we increase from smallest to the largest one. The cell, yes, yeah. but all the cells, the function of all the cells and the structure are the same. They combine, they make a group. Once they make a group, they are known as the tissue. Got it? And when similar yeah. tissue make a similar group, having a similar function, they make a organs, right? And then they make an organ system. And then we have a complete organisms. This is the level of organizations in the living organisms. You got it? Yes, sir. So starting from where? Muscle cells, then muscle tissues, then heart and then circulatory system. This is the one of the example, right? Yeah. Understood? Mm -hmm. yeah. So please copy the whole chart and there at the bottom, you can see this is called the example, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Sir? Yeah? So first it starts from a cell, then a tissue, then an organ, then an organ system, then an organism. Yeah, exactly. Okay.
um, Vansa. So I've got some questions. Okay, yeah. Yes, yes, please. You know, on um, uh, where it says all the way at the top, organism, yeah, what is an, um, like, what, no, wait, no, um, what is it, you know, tissue, where, where tissue is, the box tissue? Tissues, basically, when the cells make the group. Like, what, no, what's like, um, the xylem, phloem? Yeah, that? exactly. That's a type of tissue. Xylem and the phloem oh. are the plant tissues, you know, they have a specific function. If you see the xylem, the xylem are responsible to carry the water into all the plant parts, got it? Whereas the phloem right. is responsible for the food particles. So we'll cover that part also, but for now we'll just probably only for the animal tissues and the plant, okay? Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this is the our structure and the organization of the cells. And the first thing that we're gonna cover in this topic, it is like this is the question. So it's very basic, so we don't need to do this one question then as well. So I have already given you the thing. Okay, so now I'm gonna cover up this system. The first system we're gonna cover the human digestive system. Okay, so as we know that the human digestive system start from where? It start from the mouth, right? Isn't it? And if you see mm -hmm. over here, so let me share my white bow and this would be over here. So in the human digestive system, I'm gonna write the human digestive system, right? So it's starting from where? It's starting from the mouth. No. Right? And then it goes for the esophagus, you know? And after that, yeah, esophagus. And then it goes into where? Go into the stomach, right? Stomach, yeah. You know, and then it went into the intestine. Intestine. Small intestine or large intestine? Yeah. I said intestines, right? Intestine, which means the first goes into the small and then into the large, okay? Right. Yeah. So first into the small and then into the large. Right. And do you know, mm -hmm. actually the large intestine, you know, is smaller than the smaller intestine. You know that things. I already explained this thing. I think so. Why is it called the large intestine if it's See, smaller than the small intestine? The name is just based on their lumens. The name is based on the lumens. Lumen is, which means suppose I have a pipe like this, okay? Right? Mm -hmm. Which is called the gut in the science. What is called it? Oh, it's yeah. called the gut, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the entry, the size of its mouth, which is called the lumen. You got my point? Yeah. Right? Mm. The lumen. So, I'm going to draw two pipes over here. A and then B. Because here we have a small lumen, so call it as a small intestine. Got it? And here we have a large lumen, so that's called as a large intestine. You got this point? But actually, yeah. the smaller is the larger one. You know, it's almost like the two to almost three to five meters long. Three to five meters long. That much it is landing. Uh, yeah, that's a lot. Mm. Yeah. You know, and because it's super coiled, that's why they are consigned in a very small area. It's a super coiled. You got it? If you see mm. the structure, so like this, I'm going to just draw. This is appendix, and this is the large intestine, and this is the anus. the anus, right? So, in right. The, this one, this is the small intestine. As you can see, it's super coiled over here. Isn't it like that? You know? Mm -hmm. So, how this oh, is here? Right. Right. Yeah. You know now? Right? Well, what's the, um, the like scribe lines in the middle of it? This one. This one. Yeah. These are the light, large intestine. And what's um, the inside the middle part? Yeah, these are the small intestine. Mm. Got it? So you can see this, these are the okay. highly coiled, right? And the name based on their lumens. Got it? Right? Okay. Okay. So we know that the digestion starts, the, the digestion, which means what? The larger particles must be broken down into the smaller molecules 
right? The larger molecules must be broken down into the smaller molecule, and that must be absorbed in the bloodstream, right? Isn't it? And yes. all this mm -hmm. function is happening where? It's happening in the elementary canal, right? What's elementary? An elementary canal? Yeah. Elementary canal, which means it's starting from the mouth, right? And it goes to the anus. Got it? The whole system, uh, the whole connected. organs, yeah, they all are connected, right? They all are connected with the esophagus, the stomach, the liver, intestine, large intestine, small intestine, rectum. You got it? Yeah. Right. So they all are connecting and they are calling as the digestive system. And the whole pro the whole thing is known as the elementary canal, like a channel. You know, canal, which means what? It's like a channel. Yeah. Right. So all the process is happening where it's happening in a channel. So what is being they absorb in the water bloodstream and to release what to release some enzymes. Enzymes. You know? Enzymes. Yeah. Right? Enzymes break food. Yeah, exactly. Into the blood. And what kind of enzymes? These enzymes are helpful to digest the thing which are present into the food. We can call the superfood. Superfood. What are the superfood? When a food contain, Enzyme. you know, when a food contain what? When a food contain the carbohydrates, when a food contain the right. proteins, fats and oils, right? The vitamins, mm -hmm. the water, fibers and the minerals, you know, right? Yeah. When a food contain all these nutrients, then food is known as the superfood or also known as the balanced food. Got it? Yeah. Right? They're also known as the balance. Right? And that can be observed only with the help of these enzymes. If there will be no enzymes, these cannot be absorbed. Wait, and, are there only one type of enzyme? Or is there like many other enzymes? There are many other enzymes. Every enzyme, they have a specific function. For example, we need to digest the proteins. So, we have a different enzyme which is called the protease. We need to enzyme the, like the saliva. So that is called the amylase, you know, the thylene, pectin, you know, they have many enzymes over there. Got it? Right. Mm -hmm. So this is the thing. Now I'm taking to the slide and then I'll show you the things over there. Cool. Yeah. Now see. Can you see over here? Yeah. Right. And you can see in this box, so we have our digestive mm -hmm. enzymes and where it is released and what is break down. It's called with there. As you can see, the protease, which means break down the protein into the amino acids, right? So these are the amino functions. Acids. Yeah, amino acids. What does amino acid do? Okay, so you know the protein? Yes. The proteins. Yeah. Proteins are made up of the amino acids. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. That is. The amino acids are the building block for the proteins. Got it. So when we when, when we break the proteins, so what do we have? We have amino acids. Okay. And these okay. are also essential for our body. Right. Yeah. Okay. So what you can cover up? So you just cover up this portion. Wait. Oh, sorry. Now this portion. Wait, 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 wait. I'm not letting to write. Oh my god. Um this glitch. Yeah. Okay. Can you see? You have to copy this one, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and skip this one. You copy the both boxes. That's it. Put the heading digestive system. Sure. Yes, sure. yeah. Yes, yes. 
Um, I, I just want to, like, I have a, a few questions. What does, uh, what is the function of a liver and a gallbladder and a pancreas? Yeah, exactly. The function is the liver. Liver secretes a juice called the bile juice, you know? And in the liver, we have a gallbladder like that. Let me read that. Let me explain. Oh, inside of it, there's a gallbladder. Yeah, gallbladder, right? Which digests the food into the most simplest organ, you know? I mean, the simpler particles. It just grind it like that, you know. The gallbladder is basically what it's just like a grinder, and in the bile juice, which are responsible to digest the fats and the oils. You got it, right? What about pancreas? And the pancreas release the pancreatic juice, you know, like that. If you see over here, the protease, and which is responsible for the breaking down of the protein. And it also maintains the glucose level in the blood. Okay. That's the pancreas. Yeah. Right? Okay. So thank you. Yeah. Please copy that. Only these two boxes yes, that I highlighted. Yes, sir.
sir, I've got some questions. Yeah, please. What's glossary? What's sorry? What's a glossary? Okay, the glossaries are basically when we uh, break down the fat acid, right? So we have a glycerol like that, okay? And this is used when our body runs out of the glucose, okay? But it's kind of the sugar as well. And this is being oh. used when someone is being fasting, you know, when someone is not eating anything, not drinking anything. We need our glucose, body needs the continuous of supply of the energy, right? Wait, so this, uh, um, glycerol is produced by the body itself? No, yeah, exactly, yes. And it is found also in where, when we eat like the oily things, you know, like the burger, the, uh, the, the fries and all that, okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, like that. And these are also the working as a stories of energy. Okay, stories of energy. Yeah. When our body runs out of glucose, got it, of the sugar, mm -hmm. then it, it works, it helps to provide the glucose in our body to maintain the energy supply. When body runs, so can you when run runs, runs, yeah. When body runs out of glucose, that's glucose, Yep. Then glycerol work as a energy storage. Works as a energy store. Store, storage. yeah. Yeah. Work as an energy store. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. Okay. And because we learned over here the enzymes, you know, it really relies on the enzymes, like the how the enzymes are basically working. That's what we're going to learn over here. So enzymes are working on a special theory, and that theory is known as the lock and key theory. Right. Lock and key theory. You can see the model as well, lock and key. Enzymes work on this model. Like how this is working over there, right? So what do we have in the enzymes? We have two things. What do we have? We have uh, two things. So first, we need to understand what is mean by the enzymes and what is mean by the biological catalyst. Okay? So yeah, two things is over there. The enzymes. Right? And other things that is called the biological catalyst. Let's see. So if you see the enzymes are basically what? It's a hormonic thing, you know? It's a, like the proteins, it's like the which is being produced during the food digestion. Right? Yeah. You know, yeah. And the catalysts are basically, it's a substance. It's a basically what? It's a substance which increases the rate of chemical reaction without being used up. It's chemical right. which increase the rate of chemical reaction without being used up. That being used. Got it? Yeah. That is the thing over there. So to understand the lock and key theory, so what do we have? We must have the enzymes. Then we must have the substrate. I'll show you what is meant by the substrate. What's substrate? I'll show you this. Suppose, let's say I have enzyme, let's say enzyme A, and the shape of enzyme like this. I'm going to draw it. I'm going to just try to explain this thing.
Okay. This is the enzyme basically. Right? And right. 